Hello hockey fans, I'm Chris Durrell. I'm here with RotorPros.com to bring you my NHL cheat sheet tutorial video. Before getting into that, if you're not a RotorPros member yet, make sure to get over to RotorPros.com. We have free trials going on right now. It gives you access to our Slack channel where we have a lot of one-on-one -on -one advice. We've got skeleton lineups, premium articles, live shows, uh, cheat sheets, player rankings, and a whole lot more. So be sure to get over, check that out today. Pretty sure you're going to stick around with us for the long run. With that, let's jump into the cheat sheet tutorial. Um, so what I do, I've got sheets, uh, as you know, for almost every single sport out there. So NHL season just kicked off. I've got all the stats turned over to 2019 now. I've got all the stats that I want added for now. Always uh, open to adding more, so definitely throw your suggestions if you are a regular user of the cheat sheet, things that you want to see. But for now, I'm going to go over some of the stats that I use and how I go about um, using the cheat sheet on a daily basis to come up with my player pools and eventually uh, my lineups uh, a little bit closer to lock. So the first tab you're going to see is the matchups tab. So that's every game on on the slate. So today we've got New Jersey at Philadelphia. Uh, we've got Montreal at Buffalo, and we've got LA at Vancouver. We've got a small three game slate. Um, so what we're going to see here, if a team is playing back to back, you're going to see a check mark here, or a third game in four nights, you're going to see a check mark here as well. So LA, as you can see, is playing back to back and a third game in four nights. I have this on there just because as the season goes on, um, you can get some some tired teams, especially if you see a team that's maybe playing a back to back on the road or a third third game in four nights on the road or both. Um, all three of those games on the road, um, definitely a team. You know, if they're a little bit less of a defense, we maybe want to be targeting them a little bit more. Um, so those are the reasons why I have the back-to-back -back and third and four games on there. So it also shows away team, home team. Obviously, uh, we've got home team in green here. We've got away team in blue. That's just so we can determine here. So um, as we move over in the columns, you can see New Jersey's uh, plus 109 tonight. Philadelphia's minus 31 when looking at the Vegas odds. The game is a six over under. New Jersey, um, always looking at the row going across, uh, 2.8 projected goals, Philadelphia 3.4, and then we get into the home and road records, and the reason there's nothing in a couple of these columns, these teams haven't played home games or road games yet, so that's gonna these stats get updated daily, so as those come in, you're going to see those uh, stats filled in there as well. <clears throat> Moving over, we've got the overall offensive and defensive stats. So first of all, um, like I said, staying in this row, which would be row four, um, we've got New Jersey's offense is ranked 19th in goals per game right now. Philly's defense is ranked 15th, um, and that's a minus four. So really we're looking for a plus number, and we'll find that with Philly here. Philly's offense, and this is small sample size, keep that in mind, but as the season goes on, these sample sizes are going to be larger, and this is how I'm going to use this information. So Philly's offense is ranked 7th. New Jersey's defense is ranked 31st. That's a plus 24 advantage there. That's just kind of what I'm I'm looking at as a big offensive advantage versus a weak defense Um those are how I kind of decide what teams are going to be my core each and every night. And then you want to break it down further, you can get into the splits of those teams. So you got um, Philadelphia is because they're the team that's at home tonight. We've got their home offense versus New Jersey's road defense, and then the difference there as well. And then we've got New Jersey's road offense versus Philly's home defense and the difference there as well. And then we've got some, some advanced stats, and I get these from naturalstattrick.com. Excellent site. You can pretty much break down almost any stat. Um, you can download it onto CSV. Um, they've even got, uh, you can sign up for some premium stuff to get some premium stats there as well. Excellent site. Go check that out. I pull in some of their stuff here. Uh, first of all, scoring chances is something I, I like to look at from an advanced stat perspective. So you've got scoring chances per 60, and now all the stats you'll see in the sheet, whether it be on the individual level, the goalie level, or the team level, you're going to see it's it's per 60. That's just so that we can have a even stat. We can compare stats across players, um, you know, across the league, you know, it kind of brings that sample size uh, all together because you can have a player, you know, goals per game may work out, but the sample size may be, you know, 20 or 30 games difference from another player. This just puts them all kind of on the same level and makes it easier to compare um, teams, players, etc. So scoring chances per 60, uh, New Jersey ranks 24th in scoring chances per 60 minutes, while Philadelphia ranks first in scoring chances allowed per 60. So that's how I'm looking at that. Um, so it's a bad matchup, as you can see here, for New Jersey. But now when we go look at Philly, Philly is number one in scoring chances per 60 minutes, while New Jersey ranks 14th, which is middle of the pack, in scoring chances allowed per 60 minutes. So that's a plus 13 rating. So that's how I kind of look at scoring chances. And scoring chances are anything in the offensive zone um, where the team, you know, obviously has a chance to score a goal. 
So then they break that down even further into high danger scoring chances, and that's obviously a lot closer to the net, kind of in that crease area where the percentage um, that a team is going to score and put the puck in the net is a lot higher. So I like to look at those high danger scoring chances as well. Um, so same thing, high danger scoring chances per 60 for each team, and then versus the opponent's high danger scoring chances allowed per 60 minutes is in that next column along with that differential. Then, of course, we're going to look at the team power play. Um, ranking versus the opponent's penalty killing ranking and then the differential there as well. So that's kind of um, how I started out the team matchup tab. Obviously going to add a few more things here as the season goes on, but this is how I start things out to really nail down the two, like obviously this is a smaller slate, but on a regular slate like seven, eight, nine games, something like that, Tuesdays and Thursdays and Saturdays are usually the big slates for hockey. I'll be looking to kind of narrow all the teams down to, say, three, four, or five teams that I'm going to be concentrated on my exposure, whether it be for cash games or GPP, just the main teams that I'm going to be looking at that night. And this is where I start that process is on this matchups tab. And then once I do that, I really want to start breaking down the individual level. So then we'll get into the goalies tab. So these are all the goalies. Um, You'll see a lot bigger list here at the start of the day before any of the goalies are confirmed starting. You'll see the backup goalies for each team, that sort of thing. And then as they are confirmed, I update it, and that's what the Y is here in the in the confirm question mark tab. So if there is a Y there and it is orange, that goalie is confirmed for tonight. Um, and I use multiple sources to confirm that. So we're right now I'm waiting on, it should be Jonathan Quick tonight. I'm uh, just waiting on confirmation on that, and I will update that as well. We've got team, opponent, um, we've got the odds, so Philadelphia is a minus 131 favorite against New Jersey. Uh, we've got DK price, FanDuel price, as well as FanDuel and DK points per game. 2018 stats, that's actually 2019 stats, I will update that now because I've turned everything over. So we've got games played, wins, losses, shutouts, goals against average, your basic goalie stats. And then we get into the advanced stats a little bit. I'm looking at shots against per 60. Obviously goalies that face more shots are going to have a higher floor. And then we want to look at their save percentage to make sure that you know they're saving the, the shots that they're taking. And then we get into the high danger stuff. Uh, high danger shots against per 60. We don't normally want a goalie um, that faces a lot of high danger shots. Um, you kind of want to keep that kind of on the low. So as you can see, Carter Hart, it's only a one game sample size for him, but he only faced 1.7 um, high danger shots against. So we want to we want goalies on defenses that maybe allow, you know, um, lots of shots but not high danger shots, um, gonna have the best chance to make a lot of saves, have a high floor, as well as the upside as well. And then we got high danger save percentage. So if you do see a goalie that is maybe facing a lot of high danger um, shots against, you wanna make sure that he's got a fairly good uh, high danger save percentage. So that's gonna be on average a lot less, like you're looking at Carter Hutton here, 939 save percentage. Overall, that is like an elite save percentage. And then high danger, we're looking at about 880 to 900 save percentage in the high danger area is kind of what we're looking at once we get a larger sample size for some of these guys, 5 to 10 starts. So then we've got the team level stats here as well. Um, so when we're looking at defense, we're looking at uh, Carter Hart, we're looking at Philadelphia's defense versus New Jersey's offense. And then the differential there again. Everything green is good, red is bad, yellow is kind of in the in the middle. That's just kind of how I color code it, so it's easy to find that information. And then we've got Philadelphia's penalty kill versus New Jersey's power play, and then the differential there, injuries if there are any, and then the details of that injury that's usually pretty vague to begin with. And then I start getting into the centers, wingers, and defense, and it's it's fairly similar. There's some different things here. A little bit more information that goes into the actual skaters. So you've got the name, um, you've got the DraftKings, FanDuel, FanDuel points per game. You've got all the information, pretty simple. We've got 2019 stats, so games played, goals, assists, points, power play points, uh, plus minus. So that is when a team's at even strength, if all the players that are on the ice when the opposing team scores get a minus one, and all the players that are on the ice when the team, when their team does score a goal, get a plus one. Um, doesn't register on power plays or penalty kills. 
unless the team is on a power play and they get scored against. The other team gets a shorthanded goal, those those guys will get a minus one. Not a real big thing, something I look at a little bit more, I guess, when it comes to, to defense, but it's not really a predictable stat. I just put it there because that's just something uh, we like to look at, um, guys that are maybe on the ice more at five-on-five five, um, versus on the ice when they get scored against. So just something that you use for... Um, but more importantly, we're looking at time on ice, which is going to be your volume. You want guys that are obviously on the ice a lot. They're going to have more opportunities. So that is time time on ice per game total um, for every game. And then we've got power play time on ice. That is a little bit more upside. Um, we want guys that skate on the power play. And for anyone new, um, a power play comes to a team when the other team takes a penalty. Um, let's just say it's five on five because you've got three forwards, two defensemen out there for each team. Um, team B takes a tripping penalty. They're now down to four skaters versus the team uh, that's now going to have the power play. They've got five, so they've got a uh, one-man advantage. If the other team was to take a se team B was to take a second penalty, then they would be on a five-on-three power play. But either way, it gives the team that didn't take the penalty an advantage. It's called a power play. Um, you want players that skate on a lot of those power plays because the 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 play is you know more more times than not in that offensive zone and a good chance to score goals. So you want guys that are high in power play time and ice per game as well. Like you see Elias Pettersson, um, only two games, but he's averaging over five minutes per game on the power play. So just another way to decide between two players. Um, like I said, it's a small sample size right now, so I'm not looking too, too much into these numbers, like the difference between Jack Eichel and Sean Couturier. We've got three-game sample for Eichel and a one-game sample for Couturier. That's going to even out and be a lot closer as we get some more games in here. But just keep that in mind going forward that that's what that information is for. Now, when I'm looking at cash game plays, I want volume. I want guys that take a lot of shots on net, especially now on DraftKings where we get the bonuses um, for three-plus shots, three-plus blocks, um, those sort of things. you got the goalie ones. So these bonuses are becoming big, so we need to look at that even more this season. Um, so the first one up here in the advanced stats column is shots per 60. So guys are going to have more volume. Um, now these shots per 60, those are shots on net. Um, whether they hit the goalie and they're saved, whether they go in, it's got to be a shot on net for that to count. Now, I look at Corsi. Um, Corsi, think of think of Corsi, you know, as shot attempts. So we've got shots per sixty. Corsi four per sixty is shot attempts per sixty. So that counts all shots that go on net that are either saved by the goalie, shots that miss the net, and shots that are blocked by the other team. So it's overall volume of how much a player actually fires the puck towards the net, not just gets it on goal. So if you see a player that's maybe a little bit lower in shots per sixty, Jack Eichel. 7.4 shots per 60, but a little bit higher in the Corsi 4, which is 14. He's probably going to get have some regression. He's either missing the net with his shots. He's getting a lot of shots blocked. Um, could be a sign of some positive regression coming his way in terms of shot volume. So something to pay attention to and how I look at that. Max Domi, um, 15 shots per game. Uh, shot, sorry, shots per 60 minutes of ice time. Um, that's, you know, geez, that seems a little bit high. But it's backed up by a 23.5 Corsi per 60. Um, so that's just something that you can kind of compare and see if a player's shot volume is maybe for real, if he's maybe trending low on the shot volume, um, maybe has some regression coming. Those are two numbers that I use. So then more into the upside side of things, I'm looking at scoring chances again. We talked about scoring chances on the team level. Now we're going to talk about it on the individual level. So first of all, we just got simple scoring chances per 60. How many scoring chances that player gets in the offensive zone per 60 minutes of ice time. And then obviously high danger scoring chances per 60 in those high danger areas more close to the goalie, to the net, in that crease area. Um, so the, these are some metrics that I use for looking for upside in a player. Is um, So first of all, I guess cash games. I'm looking for guys that get a lot of time on ice, get a lot of shots, have a lot of Corsi 4 per 60, or shot attempts per 60. And I'll use both terminology um, throughout the season. I know we've got a lot of new people in the NHL scene and Corsi is kind of a confusing words. Um, so just think of Corsi. I'm going to repeat it a lot as just shot attempts and then shots per 60 is just shots on net. Um, so yeah, for cash games, I'm looking at time on ice. I'm looking at for shot volume, that shot attempts per 60 as well. And then you want to look for upside in players. Start looking at power play time on ice per game. And then uh, scoring chances and high danger. Um, blocks are something I concentrate a little bit more on for defense. 
Um, we'll talk about that here shortly. It gives you a nice floor as well for defensemen. I'm looking for maybe a combination of shots and blocks versus my forwards. I'm looking more of that shot volume because they don't generally block a lot of shots. You will get some very defensive forwards. You get like a Couturier, a Bergeron, um, a Zach Parise. You get some of those forwards that do block a lot of shots. They're very defensive-minded players. I can give you a little bit higher floor with some of those players. So keep that in mind um, when looking at your centers especially, but your wingers as well once we get a little bit bigger sample sizes you can get a little bit higher floor for cash games looking at that blocks per 60 column as well and same as goalies we're looking at team ranks um, for those players but this time instead of looking obviously the goalie you want to know what your team's defense does for the forwards you want to know what the team's offense does so we're looking at uh, for instance Jack Eichel here we're looking at Buffalo's offense versus Montreal's defense and the difference and then we're looking at Buffalo's power play ranking versus Montreal's uh, penalty kill ranking and then the differential there um, just to kind of give us a view so something that stands out that we can look into a little bit deeper and then again injuries and that inf injury information um, but what you're gonna see this is something new that I've added if you've been following my hockey for two three four years now um, you've seen my sheets before some of these stats aren't new something that is new this year that I've added is the depth chart um, so I audit lines every single day, each team, each line, each power play line, coming off the morning skate information, practice information from multiple sources, and I put that together on the depth cheat tab here. Um, the ones that are highlighted in orange are the ones that are audited that given day. So as you can see, all six teams, uh, sorry, um, we've got six teams here of the eight teams Sorry, there's only three games today, my bad. So all teams have been audited for today, as you can see, labeled in orange. Now, if you want to just, instead of scrolling through to see whatever team you're looking for, got some quick links here. Um, so, for instance, if you wanted to see uh, Philly's lines tonight, just hover your mouse over that um, abbreviation, and then just click this little range ID here. It's going to pop you down right down to Philly. So as you can see, this is line one, two, three, and four. Um, the players that are on those lines, center, wing. Now the left wing and right wing designation is sometimes a little bit off. Same with left and right defense, but generally that's what those are for. I try and get them as close as possible, but either way, the lines are audited as close as I possibly can get them for accuracy from, like I said, multiple sources. And then this is power play line over here in column A, the most left column. So the one here represents that player is on power play one, and the two represents that power that player is on power play two. Each team is going to have four lines, three sets of defense, so six defensemen, and then two power play lines. So you're going to see that here for every team, and then I've also incorporated that into each individual player tab. So back to the center tab here for a second. Over on the left, you can see Jack Eichel skates on line one, power play one. Sean Couturier is on line two, power play two. Um, as you start scrolling down, Jack Hughes is on line three, power play two. So this is just some information. Um, I gener Generally, most teams are going to skate their top two lines more than their third and fourth line. Fourth line gets very minimal minutes usually. Um, this is just a generalization, but on average, usually about eight to 12 minutes per player uh, per game when it comes to the fourth line. Uh, a little bit higher, looking at 14, 16 minutes per game for the third line. And then most teams in their top two lines are playing uh, those forwards generally 17 to 21. The, the, the better forwards, the more defensive forwards, the guys that play power play, penalty kill, even strength, those guys are going to get up in the 20-plus minutes uh, of ice time per game as well. So that's why I've got this color code of line one is obviously more important. Two, three, line four, I generally stay away from those players um, in all formats. Sometimes GPP, like as you can see, jump over the winger tab is going to be very similar to that center tab. We'll get into defense shortly, but the wingers and centers, everything is the same throughout the sheet. So I'm not going to go over that again, but I just wanted to kind of look at like Jordan Wheel, for instance, on Montreal, skates on the fourth line. Um, he's in the punt price range. But he's playing power play one. He's playing with the top power play with some of the top offensive players in the team. So that's a case where I'll take a fourth line player and maybe punt him if I'm, you know, on a smaller slate and I want to go four players from Philadelphia and they're very expensive and I need a punt play. That's kind of what I'm looking at. And this is why I've added this information so that you can easily navigate through and see compare players back and forth. Something else that stands out, obviously, you start breaking this price range down here. You've got Brock Bosser, Besser. For Vancouver, line one, power play one. You got Thomas Tatar, 
um, line one, power play two. But then you got James Van Riemsdyk, and I've got him labeled as a GPP because he's down on line three. He is skate on power play one, so that does give him um, some some upside there, skating with the top power play unit. But he's down on line three, so generally for cash games, I'm going to roll Tatar there just because he's on. He's going to get a little bit more ice time. Um, and and you like I said, you can start scrolling over and you can check that out. Tatar's getting 17 and a half minutes per game, while Van Riemsdyk is getting 15. Again, small sample size, only a couple games, but so there's a little bit more safety there with Tatar, and a little more upside there when it comes to Van Riemsdyk. As you can see, he's averaging almost a full minute more on the power play per game. Um, Tatar's also got him beat in the shots per 60 and Corsi per 60, um, versus Van JVR is sitting at 7.9 shots per 60, but his Corsi is high, so we're generally going to see that shots per 60 numbers start coming up as more games come in. So that's kind of how I use um, the sheet to really start narrowing down my players. Um, so as you can see from the main matchups tab, I, I like Philadelphia a lot. Um, they've got an advantageous matchup. I, I like Buffalo. Um, LA has a good matchup, but generally I'm looking at uh, Philadelphia, Montreal, and Buffalo in this one, the two games, the six over under, and you can see that. Green are going to be, I'm going to have a legend up here eventually, probably by tomorrow. Uh, green are going to be my core plays. Blue are like GPP only or secondary plays, depending on how many lineups you're doing. And then yellow is going to be value plays. If you see any players in red, that just means they're injured and out. So something else I do when I audit the lines throughout the day is once I'm done a team audit, I will go through the sheet and remove any players that aren't going to be playing that night, which makes sense. I mean, it just what it does is it really shrinks the players that are on each one of these individual tabs. So you don't have to scroll down through 180 players um, when, you know, say 20% of those players that are on this list aren't even going to be playing tonight. So we don't want to choose those players anyway. So moving on. Um, defense, um, so the only real difference here, we've got the line designation, we've got the power play designation, um, players, DK, salaries, points, advanced stats, team ranks. The only thing I really look at more, and I mentioned it earlier, is the blocks for defense. Um, I'm ge generally, the best players when it comes to floor cash game plays, you're going to be looking for shots per 60 and blocks per 60 and get a good combination of those. Um, like there's some players that are averaging, and I'm going to add another, just a general stat, which is blocks per game and shots per game. A lot of players on those high ends, like you're talking like Shea Weber, you're talking the Roman Yossis, um, you're talking the Victor Hedmans, they're usually getting like, on average, like a combined four to five, sometimes up in that six range, shots and combined shots and blocks together per game, which is big. So um, that's generally best for floor. And then again, for upside, I'm looking at power play ice time. I'm looking at uh, scoring chances generally. You're not going to see a lot of high danger scoring chances from defensemen um, just because they're not going to be in front of the net. They're not going to be uh, um, down there doing that. So. And then at the end of the day, once I get all that information in, I've got this here for you. I've got going to have rankings for my top goalies and what format, top centers, wingers, defense, and my top stacks. Um, as I get the sheet a little bit more set up and I've got a little bit more time during the day, I'm also going to have this extended where I'm going to have notes for players, um, why I'm targeting them, that sort of thing, so you'll be able to check there as well. This will be updated each and every day. It's going to be for members only. Right now the cheat sheet uh, is free. Um, but eventually it's going to be for members only coming into next week. Um, so this, this is information, um, all these highlighted plays, some of these advanced stats, as well as these top targets tab, um, the depth chart, that isn't going to be on the free cheat sheet. It's going to be members only, so keep that in mind. So like I said, get over to rotorpros.com, check out what we all have to offer. Um, we've got, uh, like I said, you can go to the sign-up page, top right-hand corner on the website. $5 a week, you get a three-day trial. Um, the monthly membership is $15 a month, seven-day free trial. And yearly is a hundred and fifty dollars a year, the seven-day free trial. And right now, if you use promo code Chris, you're going to get fifty percent off your um, first payment, depending on whether it be weekly, monthly, or yearly membership. Thanks for checking out the video. We'll see you in the chat room. Let's go get some green screens, everyone. Good luck.